it's Chris from Stamp Blessings, and I'm coming for take two of my Monday motivation. I actually did this whole video yesterday and had a few friends watching and commenting, but somehow Facebook decided to be a little glitchy and my video disappeared. So I'm back again because it's such a great card. I really don't want you to miss out. And if you're not watching live, you can always watch the replay and leave me a comment. I'll come back and respond to your comments, of course, and leave me an emoji or whatever you're feeling when you see me craft. Um, today's card is based on a card designed by a fellow consultant. Her name is Monica Hayward, and it is the most beautiful card, and I couldn't wait to A, make it, and then B, share it with you. So this is a great card and I'll show you how to make it because it's super easy, but it looks fabulous. The two parts of this card are Close to My Heart's National Scrapbooking Month celebration. And I'm using the You Are Enough stamp set. And this one I bought with the matching thin cut dies. So these shapes come with a thin cut, which is really nice. This butterfly is different than the die set. And then this is the die set from You Are Enough. And there's not a matching stamp set with this, but wait till you get a load of these beautiful butterflies. I wanted um, this, this die set as soon as I saw it. And they're quite lovely. They are a three-part die for the large one, and then the smaller die is a two part. So you could use the solid or the detailed. And this large one has a super detailed, a medium detailed, and then just the base, which we'll be using today. But I wanted to show you how large they are. Sometimes if you're like me, you're not necessarily reading the description. And these are three and a half by three and a quarter. So they take up a good amount of a card front. Um, they also look fabulous on a scrapbooking page. So for today's card, we're going to use just this die. And why I like this card is it gives us more uses for a die set. Because if you're investing a lot of money in a die, you want to be able to use it for different things. So today's card is perfect for that. Because with this die, we're going to create this card. To create a mask, I went ahead and I got some thicker cardstock. This is a craft. And I did create first a stencil with some of the stencil film that we sell. But because this die is so large, I found that I didn't have a lot of stability with it. I found better results actually with the cardstock. So I would lay my die on top and run it through the big shot. And with the magic of preparation and some video, here we've created our mask. And um, it's a little bit sturdier, and I like, I'll show you why I like using the cardstock too, because it helps with a little bit, controlling the ink a little bit better. It's good to work with a craft mat because we're going to be doing some sponging. And the three colors that I'm using today are Sundance, that's a new color in the catalog. Sapphire, which you can see is a color that's been around by my ink pad. And then get a load of this. This is Smoothie. And this ink pad um, predates this one. So we have like three generations of ink pads. And if you're not familiar with our ink pads, these new magnetic ones are the bomb because they just work so great. You can just put it on, you don't lose your lids. So I really like it and the size is great too. So those are the three inks that we'll be using. You could use the makeup brushes that a lot of people are using these days or you could use our Tim Holtz round sponges. Today I'm just going to be using the orange sponge that I've cut apart into three different sections. So um, they're a little bit trickier to use because you don't want to come down heavy in any one area. But even if you do, because we are stamping, you won't notice it so much. But it's something to be conscious about. And I'll talk to you about it when I start stenciling. 
So I've cut my card space for it's four inches by five and a quarter. And my stencil matches that same size that I've pre-cut and already have used. Remember, I did this video yesterday and it disappeared on me. So I'll go ahead and use some washi tape to put down my first layer. And then I wanna come in and put my stencil over it and really make sure everything is covered up. And because, like I said, this area is so large, you really wanna make sure that everything is held down well. So I'm gonna put some tape on the top and on the two sides. And now I'm ready to get started. So I'll go ahead and start with my Sundance ink. And when I'm inking up, I just wanna come in off of the side. So I'm gonna start here on the paper, dab it a little bit, and then start swirling around. Now by having a cardstock stencil, it definitely leaves a lip here. So it's something that you have to be conscious of and that you work one way and then you can come back in and work backwards so that you're filling in those areas. And I'm just moving it around. I'm gonna try not to rush, even though I'm on video, I like to try and do things quickly so you don't have to watch too long. I don't tend to edit my videos. A, I don't know how, but B, I just like them kind of natural. And we get to talk a little bit while I'm doing this. So I'm coming in with my Sundance and just giving it a nice base. I'll probably go about halfway up on the butterfly. Okay, and I end my... So next I'm gonna come in with the smoothie ink and I'll go ahead and change out my sponges. And again, I'm gonna just come in and I'm gonna work in the lower half of the butterfly. You could also go through halfway. I did do one, my first attempt, I did Sundance smoothly and then Sapphire. And let me show you real quick. I definitely went a lot darker on my first try and I've kind of, um, changed a little bit of my approach. Sometimes when you do your first run, you're like, eh, you kind of learn some lessons. So this is quite dark. I'm going a little bit lighter on this next one. I'm coming in again. Remember, I'm starting off on the cardstock. It helps take off that hard edge and just smooth things out a little bit. And then I'm remembering to come back into the corner so that I have a nice edge. But doesn't this look like a beautiful sunset starting? We had one the other day and it was so beautiful. I had to call my husband and my son out to check it out because the sky was super orange and I feel like even if you try to take a picture, it just never does it justice. The last color I'm gonna be using is the sapphire. And again, I'm gonna brush it in. This time I'm gonna come in from the top and you saw my last one, it was quite dark, so I'm gonna be a little bit careful that I don't go too dark. And that's just sponging it. And I, by just stamping off a little bit first, I can avoid that. And it doesn't really have to be perfect because to be honest, I'm going to be doing some stamping over it and some other little details that I can't wait to show you that are unexpected, but really makes this card spectacular. I was really uh, happy that Monica made a video and shared how she did this so that I could in turn show and inspire you. All right, so there we go. It looks pretty good. If I wanted to be really fussy, I could go back over it maybe with the yellow just to kind of blend everything around. But now is the big reveal and we're going to go ahead and take off the stencil. And there you go, came out really nice. So that looks pretty good just as it is, but we're gonna keep working on it. Uh, actually, you know what? The big reveal was too soon. Rewind.
put my mask back in place, I want to do my stamping first. So I almost forgot that part. So I'm going to go back to the You Are Enough stamp set and I'm going to use the foliage in there. There's a little bit of a vine and this flower here that almost looks like a morning glory. So let me get those ready. I'll stamp those also in the sapphire just to keep all the tones the same. So again, I've left my mask on. And one thing again to remember is that this is a thicker mask being out of cardstock. So when I press down with my stamp, I really wanna make sure that I am careful around those edges because otherwise it might not wanna stamp. So I'm really pressing down here close to the edge so that I don't have a blank spot. I'm gonna lift it up and see, and it came out great. Then I'll do another one over here. And again, I'm just kind of making sure I get that. And that was worked great. Now I'm gonna flip over my block. I have a long block and I'm just putting the stamps on either side so I can just whip it around and keep going. I'll put one over here in the corner. Again, making sure that I'm getting all my ink in there. Do a secondary foliage. And then to keep the odd numbers going, I'll go one more and I'll just keep kind of keep that in the middle there. But they're all varying heights, so that leaves me some interest. Now is my big reveal. Now I can take off the mask. So I'm taking the other mask that I had that's nice and clean, and this is where the magic starts happening. You'll go ahead and lay your, mad, your mask down and then just kind of cant it a little bit to the side. It's kind of different. And then I'm taking a journaling pen. This one is a .05. And I'm holding my mask down. And if you remember from early elementary school, making your own tracers and then having to cut them out, we're not going to be cutting out, but we are using this as a tracer. I'm going to just come around. You could, I guess, freehand this, but it just makes it really a lot simpler to just do it like this. All right, so I'm going to lift it up, and it's great. It's just offset a little bit, and now I did it once, and now I'll put it back down and shift the other direction. And I want to make sure that I'm not going off my edge. I don't want to have it something like this, and you'd be alert to that, I'm sure. So I'm going to take it and just shift a little in the other direction. And again, I'm going to hold down my tracer and come around and just quickly go around. Now, you might have a goof. I did on one of my cards, and it's okay. Like there, I just started to go off. I got a little bit ahead of myself. But it's all right because we're going to fix that. All right, so I'm going to take it off. And there you go. There's my outline that I just did with my journaling pen. So Monica had a brilliant idea and this is like, it's like, what? But anyway, this is the final step of the butterfly. And you're gonna take it and lay it sideways and then pretend to do some cursive writing. Don't overthink it and you just do a little scribble and pretend that you're writing. You can go ahead and go in another corner do it again, pretend cursive, a little loop. I keep it inside the butterfly. And because right there I had my goof, I really wanna make sure I keep the eye from going there. So I'm gonna turn it around and that's where my cursive line is gonna be there. And just scribbling and turning and going. So now look at that. It just added so much interest to it. It's incredible to me. I wanna go ahead and finish this off with a sentiment. They have some lovely um, sentiments in the stamp set. I left the thank you downstairs. On this card here, I did you are, and on the inside I stamped strong. So for this one, I think I'll just do you shine. Mix it up a little bit. Go ahead and stamp this again in the sapphire ink. And I'll just offset that. I don't want it to be too centered. And there you go. 
And what's so nice is even if I don't stamp it straight because it's cursive I can go ahead and it's good to go. Now the last step is, I don't know if you have one of these old edge distressors. Um, I found one in my stash. Close to my heart used to sell one and I think I have it downstairs too. But you just want to roughen up the edges a little bit. And if you don't have an edge distressor, you can open up a pair of scissors and just scrape it along here. I even use my fingernails sometimes. It works pretty good, actually. So if you don't mind getting your, you know, using your fingernails for that, especially in the corners, it always works well. And then I'm going to go ahead and just distress all the way around. I'm going to keep going. done one last side and that is how quickly this card comes together it's pretty amazing that something so beautiful and has so many steps really involved but is really quick and easy so I've got all four sides distressed and then I just get my card base and I'm gonna go ahead and attach it and my card is done so I hope this gives you some other ideas on how to use Close to My Heart special promotion this month, the You Are Enough. Those butterfly dies are gorgeous. And again, thanks to Monica for her in original inspiration and being so willing to share so that I could share it with you. Thanks for tuning in to my Monday Motivation and be sure to leave a comment and tell me how you like it. And if you try this with this die or maybe a different die like our big heart die from the shaker cards or the stars it'd be a fun way to change things up i'd love for you to share your ideas all right i'll see you next week for another monday motivation bye